Hello, everyone. Thanks for being here during the lunch time. I won't take much, 15 minutes. Um, so what I'm going to talk about today is uh, Spring Native and why you should be a little bit careful before watching, uh, start using it. The, the title is very negative, but it is more about your um, yeah, awareness of what it can and what it cannot do. A um, bit about myself, I am uh, Shoham, um, I love technology. I try to speak and blog as frequently as possible, but in a job in consulting in Capgemini, it doesn't get so much time, but whenever I get it, I do it. You can find me in all sorts of uh, tech social media. What I'm going to talk about is what is native, um, how to build one, um, and with that, what will you achieve? And then a bit of the awareness part and why you should watch out before you're using it. Um, native is uh, very much supported by the, the Graal VM movement, which is, yeah, they are now in production with their second or third release, I think. And it's, an, it's, a, it's a platform um, which is very different from the JVM-based platform that we are very much um, used to it. So you get a lot of support from a just-in-time compiler, gives you a jar, which you can package it uh, in a uh, container, run it somewhere, which supports the runtime JVM. As a developer like myself, when I think about a framework uh, such as Spring Boot, which gives me a very um, steep learning curve. So when I start using it, you add a dependency, you add a bunch of annotation, voila, you have a REST API running with a database support, and you are posting your messages to Kafka, for example, of RabbitMQ. We do, what we don't think about much is what the platform gives you, what Spring Boot as a platform gives you at the time of running the application. Also, the JVM, which gives you so much functionality to run your code, proxying, reflection, um, uh, making your uh, classes available at runtime. But GraalVM took a different approach. It builds your image based on what you need at runtime. So it's very different than JVM, which does the magic, and the Spring, which does your magic. But the native image builder is an utility which actually creates an executable container by itself. So it's not a jar, not a war, or a ER. It creates an image for GraalVM. And it's basically running the GraalVM image at the yeah, production. So what it does is it picks up all the codes, goes through it, checks all the path, which classes are uh, initialized, which methods are being called, which all external reflections you are doing, and bunch it all together so that you can run it as a whole in production. So there is no automagically stuff happens what JVM gives you at runtime, or even the Spring Framework gives you at runtime. Um, so there is a difference between the two different approach of packaging and running an application. The image, by the way, I took it from a person who actually put a very nice comparison between uh, just-in-time compiler and ahead-of-time compilation. Um, I should have put the link there. So if you're listening, thanks for that. Um, now, a bit about Spring Native. So GraalVM gives you an approach, but Spring came up. Yeah, they've been working for last two years, if I'm not wrong. And they have released this year the beta version of this experimental plugin. This helps you to build the image from a Spring Boot application to a Graal Native one. Um, it works in a very different way, so you need a a few dependencies, and you need a plugin, and you also need to have a different repository because it's not in Maven Central. Um, it's all because this is still an experimental version. Why am I talking about an experimental version on a conference like this where people use stuff which are in production? Every project I've been so far, which is cloud native implementation, we talked about resources. Everything goes out of hand, memory, CPU, and your test, your development, your pre-production, your acceptance, gets very slow and a lengthy process of acquiring more resources. What GraalVM gives you is minimizing that fact. 
It requires minimum CPU. It requires minimum memory. So it's not stopping you to run your applications for your non-prod environments in a Spring Native way. So this helps you. It's also always a win-win situation. Uh, so let's think about our CI-CD pipeline, which checks about where it should deploy and build accordingly. So if it is deploying in a non-prod environment, your CI-CD pipeline picks up the uh, image building of Graal VMWay, Spring Native way, and deploys it there. You might see in the plugin there are uh, they use build packs, so there is another version of this plugin where it uses the binary of GraalVM and generates the image. But that requires the binary to be installed on the machine that you're running the build. So if it is a CI/CD pipeline, you need it in your um, machine that's building that. But this way, in a build pack uh, without Docker files, I call it. So build pack is without Docker files where you can also specify which native image you are actually going to run it on. So what is results into? It results into a minimal image size. So the top one is actually made with a Docker file and with an OpenJDK base image. And actually, that application has nothing. If I can show you quickly, this application has very minimal dependencies. I have a Spring Boot starter web and a and a H2 database in memory, and nothing. If you can see, I have no application code at all. Think about if I start adding application code to this, what will become? So it gives you very lower image size, and uh, I also wrote a blog two years ago about choosing the right base image when you are building a, or packaging a Java application. Um, nobody tells you that, but every base image you choose results into a very different image size when you are uh, building it. The startup time is absolutely brilliant. Um, with an application which has no application code at all, starts off in four seconds. And with a native image, it's basically in milliseconds. The memory footprint, also I'm not doing anything at all, but already, the native, non-native image has already taken on 131 MB of memory size. Think about if you start adding stuff to it. It's very common. We, the blog two years ago I wrote was based on an uh, application where we had 30-odd microservices. And we ran into issues because we, at the time, we needed around 30 to 40 GB of memory just to run those applications. And they were not doing anything much at all, reading from a database, sending it to somewhere, or um, getting an event, putting it in a Kafka. And yeah, these sort of small application has a 30 GB of memory. And coming from, yeah, I, I come from a very Oracle background, so where we were used to with monoliths. I remember 4 GB of RAM or XMX value is more than enough for us. But wait, all of those are very nice, but there are things which you should be aware of. So this is the part where you should be aware of what you are getting into. There are two things in GraalVM. So you can also check it out in their documentation. There are things you can manage via config uh, file. And there are things you won't even get. So you have dynamic class loading, reflection, dynamic proxying, serialization can be achieved via configuration file. So if you have reflection being used within your um, application code, or you are doing proxying within your application code, you can achieve it via specifying a config file. Um, please take a note, the, the Spring Native plugin does that for you. So for Spring Native plugin, when you're building it, it makes and generates all the config files before it packages it. So that kind of um, complexity is being taken away from it. But there are things that are not possible at all, like um, debugging and monitoring. That's a quite an important part of um, our application. When you use a JFR, you don't have that ability in Graal VM at all. Not only that, you should be also looking at their backlog. There are a lot of things which are not yet possible with Spring Boot applications running on Graal VM image. You cannot do Spring Cloud Gateway. You can, you can do a bit of AOP or Kafka streams and Actreon queue, but not totally supported. You cannot do Liquibase or Flyway. So if you are actually managing your database operations with Liquibase or Flyway, you cannot do that at all. You cannot do OpenFane, which I'm very big fan of when you are 
communicating between two APIs? You cannot do that yet. Please take a look at their milestones and which is getting released when. It's very important for you. All those negativity, but you can still do a lot. And if you take a step back and think what are applications in your um, production or your, your project you're running in, there are still a lot of things you can do. You can do Timeleaf, you can do gRPC, you can do normal web MVC or Flux, you can do cloud functions, uh, you can also use Lombok if you're a fan of it. You can also do Kafka, Rabbit, MQ, and Streams. Limitations, but there are things available. Check out the samples in the Spring Native uh, project. Um, they have a ton, actually. They have a ton. And to end with, if you think of a very small application, you can still achieve this with Spring Native running in your non-production environment. And that, with four minutes left, I wish you happy lunch. <laughs>